Okay, we're up to one of my favourite processes in ZBrush, polypaint. Much maligned, people think everything can be done in substance paint, the Maori and the rest. Polypainting brings out the artist in you. We're using cavity mask, which can be found in your masking palette. It comes with a negative and positive value. Think of it as masking peaks and troughs. Um, standard brush, that's all we're going to be using. But we're going to be using smooth as well but with R just the RGB value on, turn the Z add off. That's when you press Alt, that's a smoothing function. Um, what that does is it actually takes the paint and smudges it and blends it without destroying the surface details. It's obvious, but it's a nice trick once you get to use it, use it as a, a constant piece of your arsenal. Your painting will improve massively. And this might seem silly, but this is a, a palette of paint. What I do here is I think like a traditional artist, I limit myself to a number of paints. If you hover over a colour and press C, ZBrush will sample that colour. And you can almost get colour blindness if you don't do something like this. That there's almost too many colours on the spectrum and you lose the plot. This way you've set yourself an artist palette. Okay. Now grab a colour. Turn Z add off. And do your big broad strokes. Just step it down the subdivisions just so that the paint flows quicker at this stage. This is a quite traditional to be expected kind of colour palette for a T Rex. Won't do anything too garish. I've done T Rexes for illustration with red heads, blue bellies. You've got to think of them apparently like birds. And these guys had incredible eyesight, so they would have showed off colour as part of their arsenal of attraction, threat behaviour. Oops, got my own rule. I didn't turn off Ziad. I'm constantly switching between painting a little and smoothing and blending the paint on the surface. Seriously, think like an artist, think like a painter. I'm just adding that colour to my palette so I can sample it again in the future. And there are no really real rules on this, except for in the animal kingdom. Creatures like this normally have a lighter belly and a darker top surface. And poly painting functions the way airbrush works. I used to airbrush all of my models. I used to make models and displays for museums and theme parks. So again, it's just broad strokes. It'd be bold. It could all be changed. Get a nice contrast to the belly and the back and the face of the creature. Again, C samples the colour on that palette. And the contrast is really strong at this stage because we will be knocking it back over and over again. You can't jump in and actually do the final details at this stage. You've got to think layering your colours constantly. I'm actually using cavity mask here with a slider to the left so it actually deposits the paint in the alcoves, in the grooves, in the crevices. Move the slider to the right and you can highlight the high surfaces. Again, loads of smoothing. If this was oil paint, this would be the equivalent of flicking the edge of a soft brush over the surface just to blend the colours. But nature's weird. Animals have got so many colours in them if you look and examine them. Right, we're still not at the top subdivision level. We're still actually applying these broad strokes. It's almost like underpainting. Again, I've got cavity masking on there just to lay down some colour in the crevices. And I almost squint at this stage, I don't focus in on the details. Another trick I have, I actually take my, my glasses off for this initial stage. 
you can get too distracted on detail. Multiple passes again and again, that's the key. Right, we're on one subdivision level of the highest, and you'll notice that the cavity masking has a different effect, because it's trying harder on a high poly model to creep the paint into the crevices. And you can get some interesting effects and dots and shapes. Of course, once you go in and paint a cavity, it brings out the, the highlights of the top color. Now, these are quite bold strokes of the light color. I just wanted to take that back again. And when I paint, I'm constantly experimenting myself. There's no real plan other than the basic brief of greens, olives, and browns. But I've always found this, this process so pleasurable. When I've reluctantly handed over my dinosaurs to other artists to paint and they go through the process of exporting the maps and trying to paint and text them in Photoshop or more recently in Substance Painter, which I do love as a piece of software, but you can't work like an artist and paint in Substance the way you can in Polypaint. Things can look incredibly muddy incredibly quickly in Substance. Because you, you lazily, well, in my view, you lazily become dependent on masks doing the work for you and smart materials and all the rest. And they have their place. And if I was doing this for a piece of production and it did go through the substance painter process, I would export an AK albedo of this and take that in along with my high and low. See already we've got multiple tones, layer upon layer upon layer, upon layer on there here. And that mass by cavity has got a really interesting effect on those belly scales. And again, this is a, a practice technique. Again, just going in and softening with a smooth brush, just with RGB selected. We're still not at the highest subdivision level because that will have a different effect again. But free up your thinking and bizarrely limit your colour palette as well. Cavity masking and painting has just been my best friend for years. There was a version of ZBrush, I think it was ZBrush 4, one of them, where it became disabled until the next version of ZBrush came around. I thought I was going crazy because I was trying to use the function and it didn't have an effect. Here I've picked some really nice pale olive colours, just flying over the surface. Some pinks around the nostril area, possibly too pink. We can knock that back. Keep seeing your model in the round. Keep zooming out and looking at it as a whole. Isolate. Let's see what we've got. Okay. It's time to go in with a quite a bold, dark pink we will be going in and lightening this up quite a lot. We need the base there. Again, it's, it's about layering your colours. For me, when you look at a creature and the paint and all the effects have been layered and layered and layered, you lose the, the feeling that you're looking at something that's been painted. It looks real. And again, we're still not at the highest subdivision level on this one. Now, you're thinking, you may be thinking I could have masked this with that poly painting I had from before, but I don't really want to do something as decisive as that. 
That masking on this fleshy part was to stop the scales from appearing there. And again, I see a lot of dinosaur artists do the inside of their mouth like a crocodile, almost pale bleached whites and pinks. You think it's more like a bird. This has got the cavity masking again. It's got the slider to the right, so it's picking up all the highlighted details. And yet again, the longer you take on this, the better. Now we've gone back to that original dark colour. We've moved the cavity masking slider to the other side. And we're getting some really interesting effects. Okay, bring the teeth back. And while we've got this colour palette active, could go in and do the tongue. So select the tongue. Maybe isolate him so we can see. Because we've got grouped by poly paint, we can select him and hide the others. We can sample some of the colours on our existing fleshy areas. Again, smoothing the paint. Course, this would be ideal for going through substance painted that you could do a, a wetness to the inside of the mouth. In terms of the teeth, start with a dark base colour. Again, it's, this is just paint theory. Then gradually darken the, the base of the teeth. Go even darker. Darker than you imagine you need. work towards the tips. I mean, you could go in there and get a photograph of um, a tusk or a tooth and drag that on the surface, but that's for another video. Okay, just the tips, make them slightly cleaner. Then put some cavity masking, sample a dark color. Then smooth that paint back. If you had the time and inclination, you could spend a few hours actually carving scratches and broken teeth. But for the purpose of these videos, this is proved to be okay. Now the eye, um, I'm going to use Spotlight. I just sourced these on Pinterest. You select it and add it to Spotlight. Scale it down. It almost works as a guide for the final thing. It won't project perfectly this. Position it on the eye. And project the poly paint onto our sphere. So it's not perfect. But it gives you an idea of what you can do. So just go in and we can tidy this up. It could be that you nip into Photoshop and actually spend an hour painting your eye based on photographs. Then you could bring that in. That would be far more successful than just grabbing an image as I did. Nothing too complex, but just grab the standard brush and this lined alpha. And randomly draw shapes and sample. Pick something lighter. Very quickly, you can get a very effective pupil. Okay, he's not looking bad at all. Right, on the next little sequence, it will be speeded up. I'm just going to go in and paint some darker details. It's quite a spontaneous process. Um, let's see what we can do. a quick BPR. It's always worth doing a quick BPR just to see what it looks like with simulated 
shadows. And again, I'm not putting you through this hand painting process in real time. Lizards, birds, most creatures, reptiles, have spontaneous breakout pieces of colour like this. They don't make any sense, but in the end they do. It's weird. And this stage of adding details with the poly paint you can actually draw your eye to something you want to look at. So I'm quickly blocking out these shapes. They're very rough, they've got a very soft edge as well. And they look quite bold. Again, it's, it's almost layering your paint. You need to think bold, then knock it back. Then I'm just actually using the pressure of the pen on the surface to trail off these little patterns. And the pigmentation of these stripes does it actually gently follow the morphology of the body. When you look at zebra stripes, they kind of follow the organic shape of the creature. Okay, I'm just smoothing it back again. And going back in with the cavity masking. It just starts to bring all these bold shapes together. Now, switch there to actually doing some bold shapes with the cavity masking to the other side. So it picks out the highlights as if there's almost a layer of dust in the crevices. Anyway, we're coming to an end on this one. I really hope you've enjoyed the process. If you have worked along with me and used the project files, that's brilliant. It helps me support the channel. If you haven't, I just hope you've enjoyed the process of watching this kind of work happen. There is an additional video where I'll show you how I prepare a super high poly model for 3D printing using a few tricks with projection and Dynamesh. But if you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel. I'll try and keep the content as regular as I can. I enjoy the process of teaching. I just hope I've made something that you enjoy watching. Please leave a comment. And I'll see you in the next video about 3D printing and processing files.